You may have heard of a senator named Roy Blunt. Have you heard of Roy Blunt? He represents uh, the great state of Missouri. He was in the House for a long time, and now he's a senator. Roy Blunt is a Republican. This is Senator Blunt's Twitter page. He's at Roy Blunt. That's his name on Twitter. And uh, this is his Twitter page as of a couple of days ago. For a background, he has a picture of a lovely pastoral scene, what looks like a Missouri country road. Vice magazine tracked down the photographer of this picture that Senator Blunt had on his Twitter page. Vice tracked down the photographer by way of finding his wife, who happens to be the person who appears on the horse in the picture. The lady on the horse told Vice that she and her husband were very surprised to learn that Senator Blunt was using their picture on his Twitter page, since her photographer husband had not given Senator Blunt permission to use that picture. Senator Blunt, until today, was a sponsor of a very, very controversial piece of legislation that you might have heard something about today. It's anti-online piracy legislation that critics say would lead to censorship of the Internet, undermining the whole concept of freedom of movement online. The whole justification for this very controversial bill, sponsored by Senator Blunt, is to crack down on the theft of other people's content online. Theft like the kind Senator Blunt engaged in himself very publicly on his own Twitter page. And it's not just Senator Blunt. Uh, Vice magazine also screen grabbed the Twitter page for Senator Claire McCaskill, Democrat of Missouri, who sponsored a forerunner of this legislation, legislation to stop online piracy. Online piracy like the kind she apparently committed in taking this poor guy's picture off of Flickr without his permission. And it's not just Senator Blunt and Senator McCaskill. There's also Congressman Dennis Ross of Florida, a sponsor of the House version of this bill to, again, stop Internet piracy. This congressman put this cartoon picture of a fat piggy government on his House.gov website. Unless you deliberately crop it out, Congressman, that image comes with a big old obvious copyright mark on it. A copyright mark belonging to a cartoonist who tells Vice Magazine that he never gave this Congressman permission to use his pig. Elected officials previously supporting or signed on to sponsor anti-online piracy legislation, nevertheless proudly displaying on their most visible web homes content that was either outright stolen or for which they at least should have provided attribution, which they did not. One way to look at this is hypocrisy. You must not steal, says the thief. Good old fashioned doing one thing and saying another. I think, though, the more realistic way of seeing this is not the hypocrisy exactly, but more ignorance. Congress does not understand the Internet. Congress famously does not understand the Internet. Can we bring back Ted Stevens for just a moment? Ted Stevens was a senator from Alaska. He served in Congress for longer than most of us hope to be alive. But nothing in the late, great Senator Stevens' long, long legacy is more quotable than this. His explanation of how the Internet works. You order your, your movie, and guess what? You can order ten of them, and, and, and the delivery and the delivery charge is free, right? Ten movies streaming across that, that inter- internet, and what happens to y- your, your own personal internet? I, I just the other day got inter- internet was sent by my staff at ten o'clock in the morning on Friday. I got it yesterday. Why? Because it got tangled up with all of these things that are going on the internet commercially. They want to deliver vast amounts of information over the internet. And again, the internet is not something that you just dump something on. It's not a big truck. It's, it's a series of tubes. Rest in peace, Alaska Senator Ted Stevens. The series of tubes. Today, the online protest against Congress's would-be anti-piracy bills uh, got the lion's share of attention, as well they should. Uh, But it should be noted that there was also physical, in-person protest of this legislation today. Real people showing up in the flesh on 3rd Avenue in Manhattan, in this case to tell New York senators what they think about Congress and Internet freedom and what Congress should do about that. New York senators, Charles Schumer and Kirsten Gillibrand, are both Democrats and both are sponsors of the Senate's version of this legislation. Our producer, Andrew Dallas, was out at the protest and took these protest photos today out on the streets in New York. This one, uh, I love this one. It's no longer okay to not know how the Internet works. Stop PIPA. It's not just true for uh, Ted Stevens in Congress. It's, it's true for Congress more broadly. They have shown themselves to not understand how the Internet works. And you can tell that from all of their previous attempts to lasso the Internet like it was some kind of balky, wayward calf. But if we have had no reason to believe that Congress understands the workings of the Internet, after today, we can be sure that Congress at least understands the power of the Internet 
Google, Wikipedia, Boing Boing, Flickr, WordPress, Reddit, Wired, Craigslist, and many, many, many more either blocked their websites entirely today or used their websites to make a big, can't-miss-it visual statement of their discontent with this legislation. More than just going dark, many sites included operator instructions for how you, too, could reach out to your members of Congress and tell them to stop these proposed laws. As just one example, the Progressive Change Campaign Committee says via Craigslist visitors alone, more than 30,000 people today called Congress through the PCCC website that linked them with a way to do that. We cover all kinds of protests on this show, all kinds of nonviolent direct action, all kinds of ways that people try to get Congress to do something if they are not a member of Congress. Occupy Congress yesterday converged on Capitol Hill for rallies and meetings with lawmakers. Occupy D.C. has been sleeping outside in the capital city for months now. The Tea Party marching on Washington, including that one big, really big march that they had back in their heyday, the 9-12 one. People storming legislative hearings. People screaming from the galleries until they're hauled outside and arrested. People do a million different things to try to get Congress to move. But I have never seen Congress move so far, so fast on just one day of protest as the way they did today. When Google put up that censored bar, that redacted bar over their logo, and Wikipedia turned off the lights. In the last 24 hours, Senator Marco Rubio of Florida, who'd been a sponsor of the bill, now says he no longer supports it. Senator John Cornyn of Texas, who has also supported the bill, now says he wants Congress to slow down on this. The aforementioned Roy Blunt, with the pirated picture for his Twitter background, he's gone from being a sponsor of the bill to saying he will vote against it. Republican Senator Scott Brown of Massachusetts has come out overtly against it. Senator Jim DeMint, the Tea Party silverback from South Carolina, today announced that he too opposes the bill. Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey sponsored this. Today he said he is open to changes in it. Senator Ben Cardin of Maryland sponsored the bill until today when he changed his mind. Same for Congressman Tim Holden of Pennsylvania, now rejecting legislation he himself signed on to co-sponsor. Also in the House, Congressman Ben Quayle and Congressman Lee Terry took back their previous support of the bill. So did Dennis Ross, who was a sponsor of the House version before he decided that he now rejects it. How's that for an about face? All of these members of Congress surrendering today in the face of an angry system of tubes. It's not just a big truck. If you are somebody who has benefited from getting something done in Washington, D.C., because of the way things usually get done in Washington, D.C. If you're kind of a fat cat and the system as it is works for you, today probably shook you a little bit. Look at who was on the other side of this. Look at who was on the side that wants this anti-piracy legislation. Look at these interests. Big money, big muscle, big power of estimable vintage. The largest share of lobbying money, the big blue slice of this pie, has come from cable and satellite TV interests. Hi, boss followed by Hollywood, followed by the music industry, followed by commercial TV. These are big-time players who have funded this zillion-dollar effort to get this legislation passed. That kind of money and power behind something like this is part of why so many people in Congress signed on for these bills, even though we're now supposed to believe that before now they never really understood what was in them, but now that they've taken a closer look, they're very disturbed. Big money, big power, and very special interests in favor of something has been the way that stuff gets done in Washington forever. But sometimes, something bigger comes along. The source of the tech industry's bigness on this uh, is twofold. First, they are now really fundamental to our lives. Wikipedia has become the nation's first stop for everything. And Google, for better or worse, is where we start even before we make that first stop. The visual suggestion with that redaction bar over the Google logo today, the visual suggestion of Google plunged into a darkness, plunged into darkness by a Congress that does not understand the Internet, that is a powerful image. That is a powerful thing, given how powerfully the Internet shapes our lives. Even members of Congress understand that. But the other reason the Internet world was able to today pull off the biggest and most successful power play that anyone has seen in Washington in a long, long time is because they don't just wield the power of a few companies speaking as companies. What happened with this mass cave-in in Washington today wasn't because of the stated opinions of a few websites. It's because those websites provided you, provided every American who cares about this, or who didn't think they cared about this, but were convinced of that today, they provided every American who cares about this or could be persuaded to care about this with a very, very easy means of ex- effectively expressing yourself on this political issue to Congress. And it turns out there are zillions of you. 